and welcome to our webinar, Leveraging CAQH ProView, an industry-wide initiative to meet federal and state provider directory data confirmation requirements. My name is Jerry Kirshner. I'm the marketing manager for CAQH, and I'll be your moderator for today's webinar. Before we get started, I'd like to review some housekeeping details for all those listening today. Today's session is being recorded, and you'll receive a link via email to the on-demand webinar that you may share with others. That will be posted tomorrow. Your phone will be muted throughout the webinar today. All questions should be submitted online. You may ask your question at any time throughout the session. Simply type your question into the right side of the GoToWebinar panel, and we'll address your questions at the end of today's presentation. Now I'd like to introduce today's presenters. They are Soren Davis, CAQH Managing Director, and Ann Brisk, Director. We also have with us today Ron Erwong, our Senior Product Manager, who is available to address any technical questions during the Q&A part of today's presentation. Today's presentation will cover the following. We'll have a brief introduction about CAQH, the Provider Directory Challenge, the Federal and State Provider Directory Requirements, how CAQH ProView can help. We'll move into an overview of the CAQH Provider Directory Data Confirmation Solution, provide an overview of our successful pilot, launch and next step, and finally at the end of today's presentation we'll have time for a Q&A. And now I'll turn the presentation over to Soren. Thank you, Jerry, and good afternoon, everybody. And uh, thank you for attending um, this webinar. Uh, we hope you'll uh, find it very informative and uh, thought-provoking at the same time. So uh, first I thought, um, given that I don't know for sure the knowledge that folks have about CAQH, I'm sure most of you have heard about us, but uh, nevertheless, it's always helpful to just level set. Uh, I think, as I said, most of you know we're a not-for-profit alliance. Um, and over the past 15 years since we were first created, CAQH has championed industry-wide administrative simplification initiatives that has been our focus and our challenge. And uh, as an industry thought leader in this arena, the way we have done um, our assessment and our focus and our work has really been to bring together diverse stakeholders all involved in the process to collaborate on effective ways and to help us identify um, industry needs. And then CAQH will, working again collaboratively with all of uh, the stakeholders, where appropriate, develop uh, innovative solutions to address some of those needs for the industry as a whole. Um, what you see on this slide are some of those CAQH initiatives. I suspect uh, most of you know about them, and certainly quite a number of you are participating in them. So I won't go into a lot of detail, but just to briefly recap, Probably the one you're most familiar with is CAQH ProView. That was one of CAQH's first initiatives. Um, and it was focused on addressing the burdens of provided data collection, its ongoing maintenance, and then ultimately efficient distribution. Um, that's gone through several iterations over time. Again, all designed to leverage the wide adoption that it has enjoyed. Uh, in order to address additional provided data collection needs. More recently, we launched Enroll Hub, which, like ProView, was intended to figure out uh, a more effective and rational way for providers to be able to enroll in EFT and ERA and then distribute that information uh, to participating organizations. Again, the one-to-many relationship instead of the one-to-one. -one. Uh, resulting in administrative simplification and really reducing a lot of administrative costs for all parties. Um, sanctions track has also been a, an initiative of CAQH that has been part of ProView, which has helped deliver multi-state comprehensive um, licensure disciplinary actions in an effective and easy way um, to participating organizations. More recently, we launched COB Smart, which again is an example of 
the CAQH approach to the market and administrative simplification solutions here. We developed a way to more quickly and accurately uh, direct coordination of benefits processes and identify coordination of benefits earlier in the process than is currently done today to eliminate a lot of the downstream efforts that are associated with the process as it currently functions today. In addition, CAQH um, has, launched, has, has handled CAQH core and has had this initiative for a long time where we are maximizing business efficiency and savings by developing um, and implementing federally mandated operating rules. Uh, a large number of folks know us for that. And in fact, uh, under ACA, we have uh, been deemed a rule writing authority for uh, several of the electronic transactions, the HIPAA transactions. Um, so again, this is part of that mission and vision of CAQH to simplify um, the administrative processes of the industry as a whole. And lastly, we have the CAQH index, which is, again, fairly new to us. Uh, and it is our reporting out to the industry benchmarks of progress that the industry is making uh, to optimize operations by tracking the industry adoption of electronic administrative transactions. And this is not just those areas we impact, but also activities of all organizations and uh, efforts in the industry as a whole, so that it can be a reference guide and a benchmark utility for folks to measure results over time of adopting electronic administrative transactions. Um, next slide, please. Okay. Key to CAQH's strategy is collaboration. Collaboration and consistent uh, and consensus building is at the heart of how we approach solutions and how we align uh, industry goals and objectives to create what we would call a more focused path forward for the industry on addressing administrative simplification issues. Typically, our health plans take the lead on initiatives acting as catalysts and agreeing on consistent approaches to address administrative processes. This is critical in order to achieve the results we want. Now, consensus building, as I think you all know, is a can be a lengthy process. Uh, we have become quite effective at doing it, and uh, over time, time as we continue to do it, we become more and more of the trusted resource and the go-to thought leader to how to solve some of these uh, areas. Providers are also key contributors, and they help tremendously and support what we do. Uh, they work closely with us and provide uh, not only support in what we do, but input on opportunities. Um, and externally champion consistent approaches across industry solutions, which reinforces the kind of approach that CAQH takes to these uh, administrative simplification opportunities. Next slide, please. So uh, today's discussion is going to be a good example of how CAQH strategically approaches addressing what has become clearly an urgent industry-wide need that is going to have impact on both health plans and providers, and it's around the corner. Um, I think you all know provided director equality and consistency and accuracy um, has been in the news lately, um, and that uh, news and changes in the uh, landscape have really brought around, uh, uh, brought about regulatory involvement. Um, we know that's what's happening out there now with exchanges and new programs and products out there. There is greater consumer involvement and in choice and more skin in the game. So consumers are now much more attuned to uh, what is going on and choices that they make will have great impacts on their costs and their experiences with the healthcare system. Uh, as a result, patients do expect that uh, 
information is available to them to make intelligent and informed choices, specifically around provider networks and uh, participation of providers. Um, and obviously, uh, bad choices result in potentially uh, out-of-network uh, payment disputes and just negative feelings in general. Um, these concerns and the fact that uh, potentially consumers will have difficulty making the right choices because information is not correct uh, have led uh, legislators and regulators to respond by uh, developing uh, regulatory requirements in order to try to address this. Next slide, please. Um, this has clearly led to a dramatic increase, and it's on several fronts. At the national level, we both uh, we all know about uh, Medicare Advantage and HHS uh, qualified health plan requirements, as well as Medicaid and CHIP proposals. And uh, even the accreditors, like NCQA, have promulgated rules that are effective in 2016 that will all focus on payers having adequate, correct, timely, accurate directories and disseminating that information in easily, in easily consumable ways by consumers. In addition, we have a lot of state activity. And to the left of the slide, you can see some of that. More states uh, than ever have gotten involved in this process. And again, all trying to address the same issue, but all often requiring slightly different regulate, regulatory requirements to be compliant and on the data that needs to be provided. Next slide, please. Uh, a little deeper dive to give you some idea of what specifically we're talking about uh, in the HHS Notice of Benefits and Payments. Uh, the requirements are that uh, directories be up to date and easily accessible. Uh, clearly identifying participating plans uh, and networks that providers participate in, um, and also how that information is published and maintained over time so that provider uh, that uh, pay uh, that consumers have easy access to them, the general public. Um, included in this will also be the identification of new patients things of that type, which historically have been critical for consumers to make the right decisions on networks. Next slide, please. CMS uh, also for Medicare Advantage plans has uh, promulgated rules. And in fact, uh, uh, this past week, they had a modification. The original requirement was monthly outreach. Now uh, it is uh, looking like it's quarterly outreach. So. There is a lot of attention on this right now. Um, but clearly, CMS is looking to ensure that MA plans disclose the number and the mix of uh, providers and distributions, um, and also that uh, they maintain and monitor the networks of providers so that uh, they are correctly connected up to their agreements and that uh, they are meeting the needs of the populations they're serving. Next slide, please. Okay. Uh, specifically, the expectation is that the MA plans are proactive, prompt, and vigilant regarding the accuracy of their directories. Um, and that is going to require that uh, health plans conduct regular communications. As I said earlier, uh, the original requirement was monthly. Uh, now it appears to be quarterly. Um, and the expectation is that there are also processes to effectively address inquiries and complaints related to enrollees being denied access. Um, and with that, our expectations of provider directory updates online, things must be updated within 30 days and uh, of when a plan is notified of a provider's uh, status change. Um, or when they make contracting changes uh, to their network. Next slide, please. Okay. Part of this with CMS involves uh, monitoring. 
Um, and in 2015, they've been working on uh, audit protocols and testing to be sure that they have ways to monitor using independent contractors to verify accuracy of online provided directories. And most importantly, um, there are enforcement components to the regulations, including sanctions that can go as far as suspension of enrollment, payment, and uh, all marketing activities until CMS is satisfied that deficiencies are corrected, and also financial penalties, uh, um, which can be up to $25,000 per affected enrollee. So this is serious. Um, requirements and monitoring and enforcement to ensure compliance. Next slide, please. So for CAQH, we very quickly saw the challenge of complying with these regulations and the impact it would have on both health plans and on the provider community. Left unaddressed or left un rationalized in terms of solutioning in the market as an industry-wide uh, approach, what will likely happen is every individual health plan will conduct frequent outreach to each provider in their networks to validate, to confirm and validate directory information. Okay, inevitably we know that this will result in resource stretching at the provider offices who will be receiving all of these requests. And we suspect that left unaddressed, uh, long-term compliance will result as people just simply say they can't handle the volume of communication and the frequency of that communication. Okay. On top of that, each individual health plan now is going to expend resources to conduct the outreach and ensure compliance. Um, while still having to deal with the existing challenges of the quality of the data, since there are no requirements on the providers to actually respond to any of these um, requests. So all of the regulatory requirements fall onto the health plans, as well as the associated penalties. Um, so with that kind of a process, there is concern that uh, the provider community may just uh, shut down in terms of uh, response to the frequent outreaches. So we're very mindful of that because at the end of the day, the intent of this is really to solve a problem, not just to simply create more communication um, in the process. Next slide, please. So CAQH has already an established foundation on which to try to create a more rational solution to this need. Um, ProView, which has been in the marketplace solving a similar industry problem in terms of trying to get information from providers that is needed by all health plans, um, has been widely embraced and adopted by the industry as a whole. So that platform provides an excellent springboard on which to build a solution that attempts to get at the provider directory maintenance requirements and leverages a tool that providers are very familiar with and trust and engage with on a regular basis. Um, next slide, please. Okay. Um, as a reminder for those that are not familiar with ProView, it is a very easy system for the providers to engage and use. Uh, they have been doing this now since it was originally launched in 2002, so a lot of experience. And the process is all electronic for them. Uh, the flow is easy and basically it's three steps. They update data. Um, they manage documents related to that data, and most importantly, then they confirm that the data is correct through a review and attestation process. Next slide, please. Okay, just to give you some sense of the breadth of the ProView solution and why CAQH has elected to leverage a directory maintenance solution 
off of that is that it is currently being used by more than 1.3 million providers throughout the United States and more than 800 participating organizations, plans, hospitals, um, large provider groups, and other organization types use the system on a regular basis for provider data. Okay, They currently engage with that system, the providers do, on a regular basis. They are reminded to come back to it every 120 days to review and reattest that information. So they have become accustomed and have built into their workflows outreach from CAQH to update profile data already. In addition, it enjoys strong industry support from key provider stakeholder organizations, MGMA, AAFP, ACP, and AMA as examples. Um, and on top of that, it is uh, compliant with and has been approved by key accreditors in the space um, that have governed how some of this data is used for credentialing purposes, NCQA, URAC, and the Joint Commission, uh, specifically around provider self-reported data for credentialing. Next slide. Uh, before we go, sorry. Um, what this shows you also is the adoption rate. It continues to grow. And I did want to say that even to this day, we're seeing about 2,500 new providers a week engaging with the system. So this is well used, well trafficked, and continues to grow with the community. Next slide, please. OK. Um, the ProView system currently maintains more than 600 data elements of information. And again, it is broken out into a variety of categories. Um, most of it is self-reported, as you can see here, and it's personal info, education, professional IDs, professional training. A lot of it was originally built on the foundation needed for the credentialing use case, but over time expanded and naturally lends itself to support the provider directory process we'll be talking about more today. A lot of the practice information, the contact information, the specialties and the affiliations, things of that type that are also critical and necessary in provider directories. Next slide, please. Okay. So there are currently uh, three steps to uh, accurate provider data directories. And at this point, what I would like to do um, is transition this to my colleague, Ann Brisk, who will pick it up from here and really walk you through how CAQH has solved for this problem and what we're going to be doing next. So, Ann? Great. Thank you, Soren. Um, so, that was a great kind of lead-in in terms of talking about the ProView application uh, since we'll be leveraging it um, for the provider directory solution. Um, so we are very pleased to be able to roll out the solution uh, so quickly um, to be able to meet the, the, the compliance needs that we're starting to see in, in the industry, um, again, on both a federal and a state level. Um, so if we really think about this at the highest level, we're really talking about three key steps. And first of all, there's outreach. Uh, secondly, there's the updating that has to take place from the provider themselves. And then it's how we actually distribute all of that information and the compliance reporting uh, to all of the health plans. Um, so we're going to dive into that in more detail, but this is really kind of what the solution is in a nutshell. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll actually be looking at the screenshots and explaining how this will work uh, for, for participating plans. So first of all, let's talk about the outreach process. Um, in terms of... Um, the, uh, in, in terms of the main, main outreach process, we're actually very much relying on what we're used to from a ProView uh, standpoint, which is email outreach that's done regularly to all of our providers to get them to update and attest their information um, in ProView, so all of that background information. We will continue leveraging the standard outreach of emails. We, most of our providers are used to engaging with us that way and doing updates. Um, secondly, if a provider does not respond uh, while we're doing just the standard email outreach, we will follow up with a phone call, and that phone call will allow us to um, actually assist the provider 
into either going into the solution and doing the updates or to um, or we'll actually help them make those updates directly in the in our application as well. Essentially, what we want to do is ensure that providers respond normally as they would today um, through uh, their ProView interaction or um, actually do an outreach to them and get them on the phone and make sure that they understand the importance of doing it. Okay. All right. Now I'd like to go into um, uh, the actual screenshots. And like I said, this will actually give you a visual of how the solution will work. Um, so, first of all, you're all probably used to the standard uh, uh, attestation home screen, essentially, that the providers use to go in and do their normal ProView uh, up updates and attestation. So what we'll be adding to those screens for those providers that health plans have requested uh, rostering information or have uh, requested provider directory information for is to um, actually be able to click right in on this screen to be able to view the provider directory information that we have created for them and that we would be offering to health plans as accurate up-to-date information. So they can do it right from the home screen. It's available immediately. And we're actually going to ask them, you'll see this at the end, to do a positive um, indication whether or not they've completed that information and they want it used or not. So we really are kind of forcing the provider ideally to have to go through this information to make sure that we do get, um, get a response from them. Okay, so these are what the screens actually look like. And again, based on the requirements uh, that have been given to us by, by CMS, these are the specific fields that we will be requesting that the provider review. And essentially what the provider directory solution is, it's actually a snapshot of the information they've already entered into ProView and that we're asking them to review and uh, confirm or review and edit as needed. So let's actually go through what those fields will look like. First of all, they, the provider will be able to see which health plans have actually requested this information for their provider directories. And again, when you think about it from a provider perspective, this is actually how they advertise their services uh, to the members of those health plans. So we really want to help them understand that having this information up to date and then being able to distribute it to those health plans will help their patients find them um, and, and help them be able to serve them better. So when we go through the actual details that they'll be looking at, first of all, they will be able to review and confirm their NPI, uh, their gender that we have listed on file, any languages that the provider themselves is also are also able to speak, and this is a good opportunity for them to update that information if it wasn't uh, updated initially whether or not they're currently participating in both Medicare and Medicaid, and then, of course, all of the educational background that we have collected uh, through ProView and have on file. Next, the provider can review and confirm both their specialties that, they, that we have listed um, and also their hospital affiliations. So again, we can have as many uh, uh, indicated on the screen as they currently have, and this is their opportunity to keep those up to date, especially those hospital affiliations uh, where they may have a relationship that they want to indicate. Um, and then finally, we will actually list each of the practice locations that we have on file um, for each provider. Um, that's important because over time they may change practice locations and this is an opportunity for them to edit, and actually remove practice locations so they're no longer current. Um, they can also indicate, indicate all the not to do, um, and again, there could be multiple group names that they're practicing under, um, as well as their current phone number, fax number, a type 2 NPI if they are currently utilizing one, and then, as you'll notice, all of the current office hours that they have uh, listed and that they are available to be seen. So this is important as these do change frequently. And if there's one field that we do expect to receive more frequent updates, um, it certainly could be the office hours uh, that are listed by day. Um, from a practice location standpoint, they can also indicate all of the languages uh, that the practice um, uh, can communicate in. And then finally, and these are very important, they're able to indicate if they are accepting new patients generally, if they're able to accept new patients through a physician referral, and then also, specifically, if they're accepting new Medicare as well as new Medicaid patients. 
again, very important, as you know, providers will manage those very closely, and we need to get that indication uh, as up-to-date as possible when those changes are made. So as you can see, it's a fairly short list of information that, that we're actually, uh, again, adding to them and then asking them to uh, confirm and update as needed. And, um, as they go through their normal attestation process in, in ProView, we will ask them if they have been listed uh, to review this provider directory information, we will ask them to positively affirm um, if they are, uh, if, if they have reviewed it and if it is up to date and can be used in provider directories or if it should not be used. And again, they will have to uh, click one of these two boxes before they complete their regular attestation. Um, so this will help us ensure that we can get the best provider engagement possible. So now let's talk about what you will see as a health plan that's actually uh, utilizing the provider directory uh, functionality. Um, so again, we're going to be conducting outreach in order to maximize the provider response. And um, in terms of what you'll actually be receiving, first of all, you can always get a standard extract of the specific directory data for every provider. Um, so this is important. At any time, you will be able to actually access all the current information that's on file for all of the providers uh, that you have indicated you'd like to receive this information for and that we have, uh, we have received this information for. Secondly, we're also going to give you a summary report of all of the changes that have been made by the provider, as well as um, a, an indication if that, of whether the provider actually uh, made any changes. So, it's essentially kind of an audit report for every provider uh, that will give you the details of all those changes that have been made and that can then be mapped into uh, whatever back-end process or system that you're using to, to maintain this information. And then finally, we also will give you, which is very important, the outreach compliance report. Um, this is going to have every outreach that was made according to the regulations. It will be date and time stamped, um, and that will be your proof of compliance uh, in, in case of a CMS audit. So here's the best part. We actually piloted this solution several months ago, and we got great results. Um, essentially, we tested it, and, and it works. Um, almost 70% of the providers that we, uh, did this, that we reached out to actually responded, uh, most of them after just one email which does show that there is good, um, up-to-date engagement with our providers and that they are paying attention when we reach out to them. Over half of these providers even updated their data, which tells us that there was the need to, to, um, to update this data, and they did actually review and make those updates through the application easily. Um, overall, we believe that an industry-based solution like CAQH can help reduce the cost to the provider and the plans and referring back to what Soren mentioned earlier, uh, this you know one-to-one -one outreach that has to happen between every health plan and provider, this will give us an opportunity to be able to um, consolidate all of that outreach and make it easier on both the health plans and most importantly, honestly, the providers that have to respond to this and that we want to uh, motivate and incentivize to do so. So in terms of how we develop this, again, uh, CAQH takes a very collaborative approach to, um, to how we develop solutions, and we usually do it hand in hand our health plan clients. So we actually worked with um, essentially a number of our health plans uh, that uh, wanted to lead the effort and have the input to, to design this. So it's essentially designed by health plans. Um, and we already have um, eight plans that are committed to the initial launch, which will be um, happening in January. And as you can see, some, uh, some leading health plans in many different markets, uh, different, different size health plans, all have a need to uh, collaborate in order to, to make this work. Um, so this is a good indication, we think, of, of how the industry can come together to really solve this problem. So let's review. Um, first of all, as we discussed, provider directories are, are hard to update and maintain. Um, we know it's causing a lot of pain in terms of uh, members and patients and, and people being able to find uh, the providers in their networks and then actually be able to physically find them when they, they go to see them. 
Um, we now actually have regulations uh, that will essentially force health plans to reach out to providers um, at least quarterly. Um, this will put a big burden, as we know, on providers. Um, but really the, the uh, sort of stick that's being used by our federal government means that the health plans have no choice but to, um, but to do this. Otherwise, there could be very steep fines. Um, so we've got a problem, and we need to solve that problem. Um, and again, what we decided to do is essentially take what has become a, a, a very um, a strong solution in the industry with ProView and be able to leverage that to efficiently and effectively meet this need and actually help to drive better data. It's one thing to do the outreach, but frankly, it's another thing to get providers to respond and, and give us the up-to-date information that we need to put in those directories. And ultimately, again, uh, we know that the government's going to actually be auditing this data, so getting good information into these systems is very important. Um, providers know us, and they trust us, and they use us. And we think that's an important foundation uh, to base any solution on and, and why we have a good approach. This solution will be available in January of 2016 um, to any current ProView clients. Um, if you would like more detailed information, um, including pricing, uh, we'd be very happy to share um, much more of how this works and, um, and pricing and contracting um, as well. Again, uh, the solution is available in January 2016, so we'll be working with um, a lot of plans to help uh, get them up and running in first quarter to be able to actually meet the requirements um, of the new laws. Well, thank you, Anne. Well, now's the time during the webinar when we have time to answer your questions. Again, to, to submit a question, you simply need to enter it into the question section of the panel on the right side of your screen. And we have our first question. How does CAQH decide on what data to collect for directory updates? Soren, why don't I give that one to you? Uh, thank you. Um, OK, terrific question. and. Uh, CAQH, as I had said earlier, works through a very collaborative process. So what we first did is obviously um, there are regulatory and compliance requirements. And in the regulations, uh, specific data requirements were defined. And we reviewed all of them to ensure that we are touching and requesting that data so that it will be available and put in front of the providers to react to and respond to. On top of that, we also work with our health plan organizations participating um, to ensure that the data and our interpretation is correct and crosswalk it to how they work with the data and the additional needs, if any, that they may have in order to ensure that their directories are accurate and timely. Uh, and lastly, we also work with the providers because in all of these type of initiatives, it's a balancing act. You're looking to make their experience as easy as possible. The providers are the suppliers of this information. So we want them to supply it, and we want to make it easy for them to provide that information um, with the frequency that it's going to be needed. So that's the answer to that question. Our next question is, uh, currently when providers reattest to their application, they're not asked to validate demographic information. How will CAQH communicate this to providers going forward? Uh, Ron, let me give that one to you. Sure. Thanks, Jerry. So as part of the, uh, the information review process, and as providers are asked to explicitly confirm that their directory information is correct, uh, they will be displayed the directory, the demographic information that would appear within a provider directory record. So we will be asking them to review it and to explicitly confirm that that demographic information is ready for uh, ready for uh, publishing within provider directories. Okay, thank you, Ron. Our next question is about reattestation. Um, so there's a question regarding. Um, Providers that, that have not reattested um, and fall into an expired status. Um, so to be clear, so, um, we do have about 900,000 providers that are in the system and are up to date and current um, from the ProView transition. 
we will continue to see that um, increase. But essentially, they do have to be current in the system in order to update this information. Um, so they essentially will, uh, will have to complete that in order to be able to give up-to-date directory information to a health plan. And I, I can add one more thing, and so you know, as part of the directory solution, CQH will be performing more intensive outreach to providers, especially to those who are non-responsive and who are expired. So we'll, we'll increase the, the number of providers who are in a current state. Thank you, Ron. Our next question is, will we be able to use our current Provia roster for this provider directory service? That's a good question. Um, so the intent here is actually to have uh, two essentially kind of separate solutions in terms of their roster. We want health plans to be able to indicate those providers they'd like to receive credentialing, traditional credentialing data for, and then also to be able to tell us who they need to do uh, directory, um, provider directory you know, maintenance for and outreach. So we will have a separate uh, roster for that process, and that will allow us to essentially deliver two different sets of information to the two different users within the organization. Thank you, Anne. Uh, there's a question on here regarding if this is for um, uh, Medicare Advantage plans only. Um, this, uh, going back to sort of the, the background on the federal rules, this actually covers, these requirements actually cover both Medicare Advantage plans and also uh, any qualified health plan that participates in the federal exchange. So because of that, um, the federal, you know, the federal exchange also would like to see very accurate provider directories. Um, especially for the purpose of consumer shopping um, for their health plan and being able to determine if their providers are actually in network or not. Um, so you're going to see it actually across both of those segments. As well, there could also be state-specific uh, rules. So we have a couple of questions asking if the Jerry, slides will be made available after. I'm sorry, sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I just wanted to add a little something to the earlier question. Um, I didn't want to interrupt Dan because she jumped into the second one, the one about the uh, two roster approach. Um, that's also important because um, on the directory maintenance roster, uh, organizations will be able to put delegated providers on because from a provider from a directory maintenance perspective, the distinction between uh, directly credentialed or delegated is non-existent. This is directory information. It's all your providers. So we know that organizations have used uh, ProView for non are not using ProView for delegated. Some are. Um, so as a result, that also will allow the addressing of dealing with delegate providers through this process for all organizations. All right. Thank you, Soren. Also, we've had a few folks asking about how they can obtain a copy of the slides from today's presentation. Uh, we will make those available to you as well as a recording for the on-demand webinar. See, our next question, we have many physicians employed by hospitals and contracted under delegated credentialing, and therefore we have not added them to our CAQH ProView roster. How can we avail of the directory updates without the expense of adding them for full credentialing? Ron, did you want to go ahead and take that one, please? Sure. Um, so this goes back to Anne's previous point about having two separate rosters, one for credentialing and one for directory maintenance. So if, if there are providers that you, you don't need full credentialing data for, you'd be able to add those providers to your directory specific roster and uh, wouldn't incur the, the cost of the full uh, credentialing profile. Thank you, Ron. Our next question. Will CAQH update the product if regulations change, for example, adding new data points to the directory summary? Anne? Yes, um, that's a good question because um, as we saw last Friday, uh, CMS and HHS can change their minds frequently. Um, so we do expect that there will continue to be new field requirements. Um, we also may choose to add more field requirements to help the health plans. Um, gather more information just as needed to, to maintain better directories. So we're going to continue to get input from our health plans, and we already have um, uh, some uh, plans to be able to even add more data next year. So we will continue to update and, and enhance the solution as we go forward. Thanks, Ann. Our next question, uh, this was for Soren, is the new initiative an extra cost to current ProView customers? 
Uh, yes, this new solution will be a, an additional minimal cost to uh, to um, ProView clients. And uh, as Anne uh, said earlier, we would encourage all those interested to reach in directly so we can discuss uh, what cost structure looks like and uh, the related processes around contracting and roster creation uh, for this specific uh, use case. Thank you, Soren. Uh, next question, if they're expired, then the outreach would not occur for them. Is that correct? Ron, can you take that? Sure. So uh, that's, that's a good question. I'd like to clarify that. So if providers uh, go into an expired status within ProView, we'll actually increase our level of outreach to uh, get them into the system, review their information, and update it. We'll, we'll, um, we'll intensify the outreach and even resort to uh, phone calls to encourage them to, to review their information. Thanks, Ron. Uh, we have another question here. How are we communicating to providers the urgency of the accuracy of the information so that health plans can avoid large penalties? Anne, could you go ahead and take that, please? Yes. Um, we we very much agree that that is a critical um, a critical aspect of this. Um, we also think that's one reason uh, to to consider using ProView because of the the general response um, that we do get from providers. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, we're really taking a different tact in terms of how we explain uh, the outreach to providers. We want them to understand that this will benefit them when their patients can um, one find them on a directory. Um, and then be able to actually contact them and make an appointment. Um, when you think about it, directories really are the best form of advertising for a provider. Um, by helping them begin to understand that, and begin to understand that the data we're collecting through ProView uh, can actually enhance uh, their, their practice and their business, um, we believe that that's going to be critical. The other aspect of that, of course, is if they are not accepting new Medicaid patients, you want to make sure you don't have you know, Medicaid patients calling you. So, Keeping this up to date is critical. We're really going to focus on that in our um, our our, uh, our communications campaigns that are going to go to those providers, um, and we're going to continue to um, to sort of maximize that outreach again uh, through the ProView application. Okay, Soren, uh, we have a question for you. Uh, the 2016 NCQA standards also require confirmation that they are aware of which plans they are in your network. Are there any plans to accommodate this standard? Uh, yes, we're looking at uh, how to to best address that. Uh, clearly, the the provide the plans that are going to be participating are giving us the providers that they want, so that connection will be made clearly, and the providers will see who is requesting that data. So the, there will be that connection for the providers and the payers. Thank you, Soren. Our next question, will there still be only one set of data on ProView, or will there be a separate duplicate data set for directory data? Ron, could you hand it out, please? Yeah, so as providers are coming into the system and entering their information, we want to reduce any, uh, any level of duplicate data entry. So they're entering it once. It's going to be available for both uh, credentialing and for directory purposes. Our next question. Uh, does this mean that you would need to have all your providers on your rosters at all times? Um, so again, the reason we actually separated uh, this directory maintenance solution from standard ProView is because of the need to potentially have providers um, that you'd be monitoring for directory maintenance that you would not necessarily be getting credentialing data for. And those could be, as we mentioned, delegated providers uh, or just providers that you're currently not collecting credentialing data for. Um, so because of that, again, we're going to allow you to maintain two rosters. One would be a directory maintenance roster to indicate those that you'd like to receive uh, the directory updates for, as opposed to your standard ProView credentialing data. Our next question, will the dates of the communication to the provider be posted so that we know how many attempts were made to contact that provider? Ron? So the uh, outreach compliance report that the solution will generate for the health plans will have all of that information. It will uh, outline uh, when the communications occurred, uh, the outcomes of the communication, um, you know, what phone number or email address. So that all of that information is going to be available. 
Okay. Uh, will both the credentialing and the directory data be kept in sync? Um, yes, it will be because um, they are actually updating both at the same time. So um, again, the, the snapshot is actually created from the ProView data. Um, and so any changes and updates uh, made will be reflected in both the credentialing information as well as directory. And again, as we noted, um, almost half of all the providers of the 70% that responded in the pilot also actually made updates, which was, uh, which was pretty, pretty considerable. So. Thanks, Dan. Our next question, if a provider makes a change in the directory solution, will the change appear in the standard extract? Juan, can you take that, please? Uh, yeah, so if a provider is making a change in, in the directory solution, information does appear in the extract. Um, it's, uh, as long as it's uh, updated and attested to, so it, it will appear in the extract. Thanks, Ron. Our, our next question, will the data be in real time? Yes. Um, so, so the as as the provider updates the information and tests to it, uh, it becomes immediately available to the health plans through the standard extract. So, uh, some health plans choose to get an extract on a daily basis, and that information would be uh, immediately available to them. Uh, we know that um, CMS it has uh, has redefined what real time means to to 30 days, but we're, we're able to get the information out to the health plans immediately. Thanks, Ron. Our next question, uh, will you be changing your requirement to have providers reattest from 120 days to 90 days? It's an interesting question. Um, uh, the answer is actually no. We still would like providers to reattest uh, according to the credentialing uh, cycles that, that we've created in ProView. Um, however, we will be doing the specific directory maintenance outreach um, every 90 days according to the new regulations. So, um, so essentially, they are going to be receiving two different uh, outreaches from us requesting this information. Um, again, if nothing's changed with their directory information, they don't have to make any changes. We're just going to be reminding them to update that information specifically for directory needs um, every 90 days. Thanks, Anne. Our next question, how long will CAQH reach out to have providers update their profile after their attestation expires? Ron? So we'll, we'll continually reach out to the provider. Um, you know, via, via email, we have a, a regular cycle of, of outreaches to the provider. So those will happen even after the attestation expires. And then especially after the attestation expires, we'll intensify the outreach uh, with phone calls and other methods as necessary. Um, we've also had a number of questions on pricing, and um, uh, we would invite you to reach out to us specifically uh, so we can follow up with you on the pricing. Um, we are still finalizing it. As everyone knows, this, uh, this requirement has come pretty fast and furious. Um, so uh, we will have it ready uh, uh, very shortly, but we'd like to talk to you directly about your needs and then discuss what the pricing would be for the solution. Thank you. We have time for one, one last question. Uh, does this directory file interface with Cactus or other credentialing software? Ron, can you take that, please? Sure. Uh, so the, um, the, specific, the specifications uh, that uh, we have uh, in terms of being able to output the data from our solution, we'll, we're going to be able to make that available to uh, vendors who, who might be consuming the data, uh, just like they are for credentialing purposes. So, uh, we're, we're happy to have the conversations with vendors. We've already had uh, several of them already. Thank you, Ron. We're out of time for more questions. However, if we didn't get to your question during today's webinar, we'll be able to respond to you um, after the conclusion. Thank you for joining us today. As a reminder, tomorrow you'll receive an email with a link to the recorded webinar, and you may share that with your colleagues. You may also visit the CAQH website for more information or email us at sales at CAQH.org. Thank you and have a great day.